Okay, so next, in the red corner, Spencer Gregg. Gregg coming in at 70 kilograms from Paul Cage Academy, the gym that is the home of the MMA League. Trained by Andy Walker, his opponent in the blue corner, Eric Swithenbank. Swithenbank coming in slightly heavier, 76.9. Swithenbank from Exeter MMA. Swithenbank is in the black and white shorts with the black and white rash guard in the blue corner. Gate comes flying out with a massive big flying knee to the midriff. Swithenbank pinning Gegg into the cage wall. He's got an underhook. That's a good start position. He's got one underhook. He's got double underhook. So Gegg needs to get out of those underhook control positions. Swithenbank gets the takedown. Gegg shrimps in very nicely. Gets full guard position. So it's full class guard position. Losing the ability to talk today. Apologies. Gegg has a full close guard position. Swithenbank posturing up from guard to strike. Spencer going straight on the offence for that right arm, sinking it in deep. Swithenbank defends very, very well. Pulls that right arm through, buries it deep. No access granted today for that arm bar, I'm afraid. So Spencer Gegg now looking for guillotine. Open guard control. So there we can see with the hip control, this is where a guillotine is very dangerous on the floor. So Gegg can pull the hips of Swithenbank down while sinking the arm through for the guillotine. Like I said earlier, cutting off the trachea, restricting the airflow. It's a really uncomfortable position to be in. And he taps very, very early on in the round. Very good win there for Spencer Gay, but a fantastic start, an impressive display from Eric Swinnenbank. Okay, so next, into the ring, Alan Dillon. Dillon from Anya Nugent's. Dillon is an MMA League veteran. Um, he's been with us since day one. We've seen him compete many a time. So Dillon in the blue corner with the black rash guard, black shorts, black shin guards, looking rather stealthy there. Today his opponent, Martin Timmis. Timmis in the white rash guard, yellow shinies, yellow gloves, and the green tap out shorts. No missing you in the ring today then, Timmis. Timmis from Paul Cage Academy. Both fighting at featherweight, both coming in just under the required 65.5 kilos. Nice catch there from Dylan, catching the leg, dropping Timmis down onto the floor. Timmis recovers. As he recovers, though, he's giving his head up. He's out of a potential guillotine. We're back standing. And we know that Dylan's very, very comfortable standing. A purveyor of catching leg kicks as he does so for the second time this round. And a third kick caught by Dylan. So we see Timmis changing his, his kick angle ever so slightly. Shoots in for a double leg takedown. Dylan throwing on the guillotine. Now if Dylan can get the hip control as well, which he loses the head and doesn't get the hip control, it's not a danger. And it could have been so. Dylan now getting his hooks in. Are we going to see him take guard? Or are we going to see him try and pass to take the back? You know, Dylan is very experienced in the guard position. Very experienced grappler. So this is a dangerous position for Timmis to be in. And here's Scott Pooley cornering from Paul Cage Academy. The dulcet tones of Mr. Pooley there, giving him excellent advice to get the arm out of the guard position. Dylan comes in underneath scissors the leg and takes the fight back to the ground again. So Dylan has got a guard. He's, he's off to the side. He needs to either claim guard or to get out of there and take rear choke position. So we can hear Scott Pooley advising Timmis to pass Dylan's guard, but Dylan has now caught Timmis's left arm in with his head. Timmis escapes, very nice escape there. It's a dangerous position to be in, that could have been a side choke finish. So Dylan, full guard, hooks under the leg, looking to take the fight back to the ground again as Timmis postures up. Beautiful catch there from Dylan. Dylan caught Timmis's arm there, was looking for a key lock, didn't quite get it. Timmis ends up on top, goes into the half guard position. These guys are so fast, I'm struggling to keep up talking. So Dylan now on the on his back. 
half guard position. Timis on top, he's got to get that leg free. There we see him searching the right ankle in to try and free the left knee from the half guard position. Timis firing the knees into the midriff to Dylan. Can't strike the head, but you can strike the body. Tim is still looking to try and pass the guard. Dylan reclaims the full guard position and almost a reversal. So Dylan coming off to the side again. What is he going to go for? Is he looking to separate head and the arm? Is he looking to take the back? He's now switched to a triangle attempt or armbar. He's got both options here. Nice defence there from Timmis. That's beautiful textbook stuff there. Throwing the arm behind Dylan's back. With the arm protected, you cannot get guillotine. You can get arm barred, though. Beautiful pass from Timmis. This is turning out to be an absolutely cracking featherweight bout. Plenty of submission attempts, and that's what we need to see, because the rules, you score maximum points of three points for a submission win or a stoppage win. You score one point for a draw. If you lose, you score nothing. So the maximum points available in any given round are six. At the end of the season, each category will have the top three based on their accumulation of points. So all the gyms and fighters are going to be looking to come away with maximum six points, keep that tally up and get them on top of the league board at the end of the season. It's also an award for the gym that's accumulated the most points throughout their fighters as well as personal fighters. So there we go, back in some action. Nice reversal from Dylan and a dangerous armbar there for Timis. Dylan locking his ankles, but a beautiful escape there from Timis. Dylan postures up into mount position. It's a low mount, he needs to get his head free, so Timis is looking to secure Dylan's head. We've got 20 seconds left on the clock here. I've lost count how many submission attempts we've seen from both parties. It's turning out to be one of my favourite bouts of the day so far. Final 10 seconds, Timis on top, Dylan pinned against the cage wall. It's been a fast grappling pace, we're going to go the distance, we're going to go for a draw, and we do. Martin Timis, Paul Cage Academy, Alan Dean and Andy Nugent ends in a draw. Okay, so next we are moving up into the lightweight category. And in the ring currently, we have Jamie Daniels. Daniels fighting out of Paul Cage Academy in the red corner. Daniels has got the blue shin guards on and the black shorts and his topless. Julian Tipping. Tipping went in at 68.8, so just under the lightweight cutoff. Tipping from Kettering Shoot Fighters is in the blue corner. He's wearing the all black kit with the white shin guards. So. Jamie Daniels training at Paul Cage Academy. Credited to a few fights in the MMA league. Opening up with a nice kick, but tipping straight in for the takedown. Buried low, looking to control the hips. Gets the double leg scoop against the cage wall. So Daniels is now on his back. He's got a closed guard position. As tipping, defending his arms very well, keeping everything nice and tight. So not giving Daniels anything. Can hear Scott Pooley cornering. Jamie Daniels advising him to go for a high guard. And there it is. There's the attempt there. A triangle attempt from Daniels early on. Tipping passes beautifully. Straight into side control. So tipping has given away an underhook. Daniels has got a nice right underhook. Gets the reversal there. So again, fantastic technical stuff we're seeing here on the early, early stages of this bout. Only one minute in. Having a brief equipment check there. Daniel's gloves just coming loose. We're back in the action. Daniel's in half guard, so tipping. Doesn't quite have the lockdown position for half guard. And there we see Daniel's through, but some brilliant jiu-jitsu there from tipping, using Daniel's 
balance to pull out. Daniels locks on a triangle, tipping with a very gentlemanly slam there, just pops his head out. And again, fantastic fast pace. This is really good level stuff we're seeing here for the amateur MMA league. Now there we can see tipping, looking to lock the shoulders. Got to be careful, he can't crank the neck there. So I think he gave up on that move rather gentlemanly. Then, then get up, uh, get pulled up for a neck crank. Daniel's in mount position. So if this was pro rules, this would be devastating for Julian Tipping because he would be getting pounded relentlessly with some ground and pound. It's not professional rules. We are no headshots. And so Daniel's just going to have to work for a submission. And we can see Tipping now walking around the cage wall, using it for leverage to escape. Does it very effectively. Pushes Daniels right across the cage and back to standing as we approach the halfway mark. So head control from Tipping as he's going to push Daniels back into the cage wall. So Daniels also trying his own guillotine attempt on Tipping. Very, very good matchmaking here at the uh, MMA League. Big body shots from Daniels. Tipping almost looking like he's enjoying them. Nice instep kick. There's the double from Daniels and Tipping just waiting for it. Like a cat waiting to pounce. Fires the guillotine attempt, changes it into underhooks. Spins Daniels into the cage wall. Firing some massive knees that are coming from right on the other side of the cage. Second time we've seen the guillotine takedown. Fantastic reversal takedown there. One of my personal favourites from Tipping. So Tipping takes side control. Are we going to see Anaconda? Are we going to see Bravo? No, we're not. Daniels reclaims guard position. Fantastic stuff. Tipping on top. Daniels on his back. Open guard position. Just both competitors enjoying a brief rest. And there's Tipping's pass. Passes the guard straight onto Daniels. Back. Daniels isn't having any of it. He's straight back onto his feet. Freeze his head and we're back standing again. Three minutes 52 on the clock. Just over a minute left. So we can see Daniels going in. Couple of body shots, big takedown. Almost broke the cage there as Tipping steps off and uses Daniel's momentum to throw him into the cage wall. Tipping on top, it's a very loose mount. Is Daniel's going to escape the mount position? Daniel's managing to get his hips through, securing Tipping's head in the process, and he's back standing. Clinching into the cage wall, Daniel's fires one knee into the midriff, two knees into the midriff, switches into a guillotine attempt. Tipping looking for Daniels' leg. Daniels is happy to sit down and work that guillotine. It's not going to be enough to finish as we enter the last 10 seconds of the round. And indeed the fight. Tipping throwing some token shots down. It's not going to get a finish at this point. We're going to go to a draw. It's going to be one point apiece. Last ditched effort from Tipping for a scarf hold submission. Not going to happen. Fantastic technical bout at lightweight. Julian Tipping, Jamie Daniels ends in a draw. Roll.